guys welcome back Priya here and today I'm going to cover one of the most important condition in vascular surgery that is abdominal aortic aneurysm aka triple A. Before going into abdominal aortic aneurysm let's talk about aneurysm itself. Aneurysm is an abnormal dilatation of a blood vessel more than 50% of its normal diameter. In that case abdominal aortic aneurysm is the dilatation of the abdominal aorta more than 3 cm normally. Did you know that in the UK, around 1 in 70 men aged over 65 years old, they have an abdominal aortic aneurysm and over 3,000 deaths occur each year from a ruptured triple A. That's right, it's pretty common and potentially a life-threatening condition. The most common site for triple A to happen is between the renal and the inferior mesenteric arteries. 5% sometimes can involve the renal, or visceral arteries. So why do we get triple A? The etiology of abdominal aortic aneurysm is largely unknown, but try to think of things that could weaken the wall of abdominal aorta itself. Possible causes can be like atherosclerosis, trauma, infection, connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndromes, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, or inflammatory disease like Takayasu's aortitis. So there are some risk factors that can increase your risk of getting triple A such as smoking, that's a big one right there, um, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, family history of triple A, being a male and also increasing age as well. Presentations. Most aneurysms, they are asymptomatic. They can sometimes present with abdominal mass, which is usually pulsatile and expansile. They can also have abdominal pain plus lower back pain. But if the triple A bursts, then it can cause sudden severe abdominal or back pain, dizziness, patient will get sweaty, pale, uh, shortness of breath, and in some cases, they might even collapse in seconds. Talking about screening in the UK, screening for triple A is routinely offered by the NHS to all men aged 65 and over using the abdominal ultrasound scan. What about for women? So normally women aged 70 or over, if they have risk factors like hypertension, then they may be advised to attend screening for AAA. So how do we get screened for AAA in the UK? If you are a man and registered with a GP, you will get a screening invitation in the post when you are 64 years old or soon after your 65th birthday. And then you can arrange an appointment that suits you. If you are a man over 65 years old and have not been screened before, then you can probably ask for a test by contacting your local AAA screening service directly. The screening test is very quick, painless and it's reliable. Research suggests that it can reduce the risk of dying from abdominal aortic aneurysm by 50%. Now let's look into four possible screening results from abdominal ultrasound scan. First is no aneurysm found, so probably your aorta is less than 3 cm wide. In that case, patients don't need to have any more treatment or monitoring afterwards. They will not be invited for screening again as well. Second possible result that can happen is you have a small AAA, normally 3 to 4.4 cm. In this stage, you will not need any treatment because the chance of AAA bursting is still small, but you will be invited back in one year to check the size. Plus, you will be given advice on reducing certain risk factors like stopping smoking and uh, eating healthily, you know, regular exercise, those kind of things. Third will be a medium-sized triple A, that's like 4.5 to 5.4 cm. Again, you will not need any treatment at this stage, but you will be invited back for a scan every three months to check its size. The fourth one will be large triple A's, 5.5 cm or more, or rapidly expanding triple A's, um, normally more than 1 cm in a year. So as large triple A's, they have the highest risk of bursting if left untreated. You will be definitely referred to a specialist surgeon within two weeks time to talk about your treatment options. Normally, most men with large triple A's, they are advised to go for surgery, you know, to stop the abdominal aortic aneurysm from getting bigger or to get it worse. So for the management of triple A, there are mainly two surgical options that we have. One is EVAR, endovascular aneurysm repair. Another one is open repair. So EVAR is where a graft is inserted from the femoral artery in the groin and it's guided up to the aneurysm and it's normally done under general anesthetic. 
The risk of complication is generally lower compared to open surgery because your hospital stay, your recovery time is much shorter. Whereas in open surgery, the surgeon directly replaces the affected section of your aorta and uh, with a graft. And the risk of complication is much higher because you have to stay in the hospital longer, your recovery time will be longer, the chance of you getting infections will be higher as well. In a case of ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm, there is no time for investigation because the patient will be not stable at all. So normally they require immediate vascular team review and subsequently an emergency surgical repair will be done. Okay, management done, aneurysm treated. What about the complication post-operatively? What are the complications you as a junior doctor will be worried of? Mainly, first of all, let's talk about EVAR. EVAR, you want to worry about endo leak, where the stent itself fails to exclude blood from the aneurysm. And usually the patient might present without symptoms on routine follow-up, so you need to think about that. Another thing for open surgery will be longer hospital stay, longer recovery period, which can lead to wound infections, blood clot, etc. Some might ask about driving. So according to DVLA, if the patient is group 1 driver, they may drive and no need to inform DVLA if the size of AAA is less than 6 cm. But if you are a group 2 driver, then you may drive if the size of AAA is less than 5.5 cm and you still need to inform the DVLA. Alright, the best part is here. Let's see how a consultation on abdominal aortic aneurysm can be done. Feel free to pause the video if you want to brainstorm and practice for yourself. Enjoy! Hello there, Mr. Andrew. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, doctor. How about you? I'm doing great too. Alright, uh, I'm Dr. Priya, by the way, the Foundation Year One doctor in the vascular department. I can see from your that you have attended last year for the ultrasound screening for the abdominal aorta aneurysm? Yes, that's right, doctor. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they told me it was around 3.5 cm and they asked me to come back uh, this year, so I'm here. How is it now, doctor? Is it, is it better? Um, yes, you are right. Last year was actually at 3.5 cm. But when we checked the ultrasound a few hours back, showed that uh, your abdominal aorta has increased to 4.9 cm now. That's like more than 1 cm in a span of one year, which, which is actually a little worrying. And uh, May I quickly know, did you have any abdominal pain or lower back pain recently? Mm, no, doctor. Uh, how about like feeling dizzy or any shortness of breath? No, I, I'm feeling fine, doctor. No, 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 nothing. Okay, thank you. How about like any palpation or feeling in your tummy? No, no. Um, why are you asking me about all these symptoms, doctor? Uh, what do you mean? Um, I know this might sound really worrying, Andrew. I'm just trying to um, figure out whether you have any symptoms from the abdominal aortic aneurysm or not. The abdominal aorta, they have very high risk of rupturing when the size gets really big, especially like more than 5.5 cm or mm -hmm. when it enlarges rapidly, like in your case, more than 1 cm in, in a short time a year. I see, I see. Okay, so um, what, what have, do we have to do now, doctor? Can you briefly tell me about the procedures to treat this um, aortic aneurysm? Sure, sure. Um, I will write you a referral, referral letter to the vascular surgery department first. There are mainly two procedures that can be done here, Andrew. The first one is called endovascular repair. It's a very minimally and invasive procedure. There will be a small cut at your groin, and then a graft will be inserted through the blood vessel in your vein. And then it will carefully be passed into the aorta region. Then once it reaches the aneurysm, the graft is then expanded inside the aorta to form like a stable channel for your blood flow to happen. You basically get aneurysm because the wall there is quite weak. So this procedure is kind of reinforcing the weakened section of the aorta. And it is then under general anesthetic, so you will be sedated throughout the procedure. But if you are not suitable for this endovascular repair, then there is another alternative, which is open repair. This will be done basically by cutting open your tummy and the surgeon will 
place directly the affected section of the theatre with the ground. Mm, okay, okay. So what are the complications between when you compare the first and second procedure? Okay, so the first one is the endovascular repair. That one, it can have complications such as wound infection of the graft itself, or sometimes when, when we are doing the incision at the groin region, you might bleed heavily. Uh, the main one is the graft itself. They might slip out of the position, uh, but then you will have to get regular scans to check for the subtle location. Whereas in the open surgery, you can have more complications such as heavy bleeding, plus the incision is bigger, right? So your body will undergo more stress during this time. So there will be longer hospital stay, longer recovery time. There will be wound infection as well. Sometimes if certain nerves are getting involved and if they are being injured, then probably patients can also have erectile dysfunction. But this can be solved in a, in a few months or years. But the risk of graft problem, they are very much lesser in open surgery because it's done directly on your abdomen compared to endovascular repair. Okay, okay, I understand. But doctor, I'm just thinking like, why why me? Why did I get this um, abdominal aortic aneurysm? May I know like what could be the factors that caused it to grow in this one year without me having any symptoms? Right. Um, abdominal aortic aneurysm, they can form if the side of the aorta is weak. We are not very sure why this happens, but there are things that can increase the risk. Um, for example, having high blood pressure or chronic lung problems, high cholesterol, even having family members with abdominal aortic aneurysm can increase the risk also. If you have any personal history of like heart problems, plus if you're a very chronic smoker, then yes, the risk may be higher. And if you have any of these risk factors that you think you can modify, it will be very much helpful for your recovery and life. Mm. Thank you, doctor. So now I'm thinking, what happens if I don't want the surgery? Like, because I'm a little bit worried about going for an operation. So is there any option to not go for surgery? Okay, the risk of the abdominal aortic aneurysm getting ruptured is very high in your case, Andre. If that happens, Patients can deteriorate very, very quickly. They will present with severe tummy pain that normally they will spread towards the back region. And in some cases, the patient might even collapse in seconds. Actually, no more than one in three patients with ruptured uh, aneurysm, they will reach hospital alive. Even if they do, 20% of them, they fail to reach the theater. And we don't want to take that risk in your cases by waiting for too long. Oh dear me, that sounds pretty bad. Okay, doctor, I think I'll have to go for this surgery. Don't worry, Andrew. I'll pass you a leaflet about uh, this abdominal aortic aneurysm and the management about it for you to read while waiting to meet the vascular surgeon. I really hope you have a roughly clear idea about what will be happening next. And uh, just want to confirm that. Do you have any more questions for me? Um... Yes, doctor, just one more question. So how fast will the recovery be after the surgery? Right, okay. After an uncomplicated endovascular repair, when you don't have any complications in the operation itself, normally patients will return to hospital ward for like one to three days. You should be able to eat and drink normally once fully awake from your operation. The nurse will aim to get you to sit up and walk as soon as possible. Once you are up and about, you should be able to leave the hospital, but may need painkiller tablets for probably one week. Full recovery means it might take between three and six months for an open surgery, whereas for endovascular repair, it might take around two to four weeks. But to be honest, the speed of recovery will also be affected by your age and uh, your basic general fitness as well. I see. Thank you very much for answering all my questions, doctor. Uh, no problem. Feel free to phone us if you have any further queries, Andrew. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, guys, for staying till the end of the video. Further details about AAA in my description below. Check out my previous communication skills video. Feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe to my channel for more interesting medical topics. And till I see you in the next one, adios.